Greetings everyone, we will continue our discussion on information retrieval systems. In the previous session, we have seen about the signature files and the various types of signature files. In this session, we will be looking about the next part of your information retrieval system that is about battery cell trees. So, first we will be initially looking about the syllabus that is what you are going to cover as a part of this part trees and part file, part arrays. Then we will be looking about the introduction part regarding what are the part uh, trees and arrays. Then we will be looking about the part tree representation. So, as a part of this uh, part trees and arrays, which will be creating new indices for your text, that is whatever you have seen up till now, that is signature files. You have created your indices for your text. So, apart from that one, we are going to create a new types of indices that is pad trees and pad arrays. So, first we will be looking at the introduction part which will introduce what is a pad tree. Next, we will be looking about pad tree structure. As a part of this pad tree structure, how you are going to, what is the thing you need to know to create this pad tree structures. Then, what are the various algorithms which you can apply on these pad trees. Then, how you can build these pad trees as pad, pad trees and trees then pad representation of your arrays that is how you are going to represent these pad trees as arrays so this is about pad trees and arrays first initially we will be looking at the tree part later we will be going for your arrays part so we will be looking at the introduction so far we have seen the text searching methods so the text searching methods can be broadly classified into three types that is a lexographical indices which will be present in a sorted order that is you will be looking about that particular indices in a sorted order then you have clustering techniques and the indices based on your hash so we will be looking about the clustering indices later for the time being we are looking about the lexographical indices so the lexographical indices whatever you have seen so far one such type of lexographical indices are these two that is the indices will be present in a sorted order so the two new lexographical indices which you are trying to learn are your pad trees and pad arrays our aim is to build an index for the uh, text of size similar to or smaller than that particular text so so far whatever you have done you will be treating your text as a set of keywords and documents we are going to uh, avoid from that particular delusion and we are going to build an index for that particular text of size similar to it or similar, smaller than the text size so we will be looking about basically how to know that in this particular thing you are going to create index for your complete text so the traditional model of text used in information retrieval is that set of documents so so far whatever you have done you have taken your documents for that document you are going to have a set of keywords so what you are trying to do is initially whenever i am trying to create an index for your complete set of documents i am going to treat each and every document as a single part okay you are not going to specifically touch the text present in the document okay so what you are trying to do in this uh, traditional model is we are going to try to create your indices for the documents that is the complete parts you are not uh, thinking about what is the text that is present inside the documents okay so each document is assigned a list of keywords with optional relevance weights associated with the keyword so remember this is the traditional model what you have learned so far what you are what you have seen in the previous units it, this is the thing that is the traditional model where you will be having documents and for each and every document so we assign keywords or generate keywords for these documents and we assign weightage for each and every keyword based upon the weightage of the keywords we are going to find that these keywords are present in that particular document we are not concerned about how what are the main keywords which are present in the document so you are having these things this is the thing you have done so far you, you have treated each and every uh, such that is information retrieval document that is the documents that are present in your IRS system in this manner that is you have treated them as documents and the documents have set of keywords and we have assigned a weightage for those keywords and we are going to search the words and the keywords only the, from the document okay 
the keywords are also limited whatever you are have identified so whatever the new things you try to search will not be getting the result from those documents this is the traditional model this model is oriented to library applications which serves it quite well so this model of treating documents and their keywords keywords with a weightage and searching those keywords all these things will be suitable for your library oriented systems this might not be suitable for other systems so even though this system will be suitable for many large applications and uh, large number of applications but this might not be suitable for some other applications so this is the traditional model of uh, treating each and everything as document and document with a set of keywords for more, for more general applications it has some problems namely a basic structure is assumed that is uh, we are what are the main disadvantages of treat, uh, seeing in your general model whatever you have seen so so there is a basic structure assumed that is we will be having documents and keywords that is whatever may be your system the system need to be treated in a set of documents and keywords and this may be reasonable for many applications but not for other so each and every application might be having this thing that is each and every application whatever you have seen might be treated in documents and words but it might not be suitable for each and every application okay so the whatever you have seen might be good that might not be suitable for all the applications in the universe keywords must be extracted from the text okay this is called as indexing this ta ta this task is not trivial and error prone whether it is done by a person or automated by a computer so the main thing you have to do in this traditional model is you have to consider the document and you have to retrieve keywords for that particular document so the retrieval of keywords will be calling it as indexing so this indexing part it can be done either by the person or it can be automated by a computer but whoever might do is it might not be a perfect thing that is it might be only an approximation and it will be prone to errors you might give it might be giving errors into the particular system that is all the keywords you have extracted might be might not be perfect and you might not extract uh, extract optimal keywords from the particular document each and every thing will not be perfect while you are trying to extract keywords for the particular document so these are the two disadvantages in your traditional model the first disadvantage is you are assuming a structure here that is will be having documents and for each and every document will be having our keywords and the second thing is whatever the keywords you are extracted that might not be optimal in sense and there might be errors present while you are trying to extract those keywords the third disadvantage you are having is queries are restricted to those keywords only so you have extracted those keywords from the documents when i search for something new you will not be getting the result so all the keywords all the search queries have to be from those keywords only your search should not be from away the keywords so your queries are restricted to those keywords only if you try to give a new query you will not be getting a result so these are the three disadvantages while treating your uh, particular irs model in a traditional system for this thing for some indices instead of indexing a set of keywords this is the new model we are trying to do okay for some indices instead of indexing a set of keywords all words except for those deemed to be common are indexed so as i told you we'll be having the documents from those documents you will be extracting a set of keywords okay that is your traditional model instead of doing that thing what you are trying to do is for some indices instead of indexing only a set of keywords okay we can index all the words except the stop words okay we can index all the words except the stop words stop words means i think you remember those are the words which need not be present in your index okay so except the stop words remaining all the words present in your text will be indexed here this type of method we are going to implement in your pat trees and pat arrays so in the traditional model remember we have to extract those keywords okay extract those keywords from the documents 
so these are having the disadvantage of uh, having a limited number of keywords and the search query also should be limited according to your keywords to avoid this disadvantage what we are, what you are trying to do is we are trying to create indices in such a manner that each and every word that is present in the text can be indexed except the stop words the remaining all the words will be indexed in this index so the new model what you are trying to create is we see the text as a one long string so the text that is present in your document whatever may be the size of your document that particular document so the text will be treated as one long string each position in the text correspond to a semi infinite string called as sys string okay semi infinite string otherwise called as sys string each and every position in the text okay so if you are trying this is your complete text if that is a complete text in your document so we are going to treat that particular document as one text string and this text string will be treated as one long string okay this complete text will be treated as one long string and each and every position that is this is the first position this first position will be treated as one substring okay this first for the second position will be treated as another substring third position will be treated as another substring fourth will be treated as another substring like this each and every position each position in the text corresponds to a semi infinite string okay each and every position that is this is the first this is one substring then with the second position this is another substring then from with the third position this is another substring each and every position from the left to the right will be treated as one substring okay this is how you are going to treat the new model so if you see in the older model if you this is your text you will not be doing the index on each and everything we will identify some words set of words what are the words we can identify okay we will identify one word that is in this this is indexing next uh, keywords next which are main that is stop words so we try to create in the traditional model why what you try to do you try to create index for only four different keywords but here what you are trying to do you are try you are trying you are treating each and every word as some special meaning each and every position has a special meaning so the complete text has a meaning so each and everything will be treated as a keyword here in a traditional model only a some set of words will be treated as keywords here we will be treating each and every position as a keyword here that is we are going to treat sys strings that is this will for if you start from f f to the end it will be one sys string then we go to some end we will be calling it as another sys string from end this is that is from this position to this position we can be treating it as one sys string each and every position will be treated as one sys string or semi infinite string so dealing with this sys strings is only the process in your batteries and batteries so we will give a complete definition about what is this sys string the string that starts at the position and extends arbitrarily far to the right or to the end of the text i think you can understand from the text the string that starts at what position that is it might start from the first position it might start from the second position each and every position will be having one sys string so the string that starts at that position and extends arbitrarily that is it can end at a few a few characters to the right or it can go as far as to the end of the text okay for example if you take this as the sys string okay so this will be the first position the first position sys string might end at the fourth place that is it is is the sys string or it might end at the end position that is at the end of the text okay the starts at the position extends arbitrarily far to the right or to the end of the text it can end far to the right or to the end of the text that we will be calling it as sys string it is not difficult to see that any two strings 
that are starting at the same position are different. Okay, that are not starting at the same position are different. So, if you if it starts from I and it starts from D, so you can understand that two C strings are different here. If you want two C strings to be same, they have to be starting at the same position. Okay, they have to be starting at the same position. If the two C strings, that is, if D it starts from D and it's under D uh, T, then is one C string. If it starts at D and ends at O, this is another different C string. These two might be different, but in order to be to be same, it has to be starting at the same position. If two strings or C strings start at a different position, then you can be damn sure that they are different strings here. So that is the line here. So I think you can understand what is the C string. Okay, C string is a string which starts at one of the positions in your text and ends at arbitrarily either at the middle or at the end of the text. That is, we will be calling it as a C string. What is the advantage of this complete model? Okay, so you have seen the disadvantage of your traditional model of your documents and keywords. The advantage is here. The first disadvantage we are having, we are assuming a structure in your traditional model. Here you are not assuming any structure. That is, your text can be arbitrarily any size. Okay, so there is no structure of text is needed. Although if there is one, it can be used. Even if you are having some structure in the text, you can use it, but there is no rule that you need to have some structure in your text. The second thing, there are no keywords used. So the queries are based on prefixes of your strings that is on any substring of the text. If you are searching for a new keyword, so that particular keyword might be anything which might be part of this complete text. Okay, you need not be concerned about keywords, there will be no keywords. Your query, whatever you are trying to give on the information retrieval system, can be any random text which will be subset of your complete document. This model is simpler and does not resist restrict your query domain. So as I told you, your query will not be uh, restricted to only the keywords. Your query can be enlarged to the complete text whatever you are having in your documents. So these are the advantages of your um, new model which you are trying to learn here. In your traditional model, this will be the disadvantage and your uh, to solve those disadvantages, we are trying to create this new model. So as a part of your uh, semi-infinite strings, so the battery is a data structure that allows very efficient searching with pre-processing. We will be learning about the batteries. In order to understand how to implement those batteries, you need to understand how you are going to implement this semi-infinite strings or systrings. Okay. So, how you are going to basically implement these systrings? You will have definition of the systring. So, if you have the definition of the systring, how you are going to be implementing the systring? So, if you understand the systrings, you will be understanding how to implement the batteries. So, your semi-infinite string are your uh, systrings. Our text, our text or database will consist of single array of characters. Okay, as I told you, your text will be treated as a single array of characters numbered sequentially from one onwards. So whatever may be your text that is present in your documents okay, or your complete database, the text will be treated as one single array of characters numbered from one to from one onwards you will be having any number your particular text sizes. So that is how you will be treating, you will be treating your complete text in your document as one long array. So a semi-infinite string or C string is a subsequence sub of characters from this array taken from a given starting point but going on as necessary to the right. So the main thing is you are treating the complete string as array. It will be starting from 1. Okay. So it can start at one of the position that is is a subsequence of characters that is if it starts at 4 it is a subsequence of characters starting from this array 
taken from a given starting point that is I am thinking I am to start with 4 and going on as necessary to the right. So until I find the end for the particular system I will be going on to the right. Okay. So I can end at 9 or I can end at 10 or at 100. So I am telling the general sense here your system will start at one position and it can go until the end of your text. Sys strings are uniquely identified by the position where they start. So, where they start based upon the starting of that particular position, okay, we will be identifying the sys string for a given fixed text that is simply given by an integer. So, based upon the starting position, I can tell which sys string I am referring to. So, this will be sys string 4. If I start at 2, I am referring to sys string 2. If I start at 1, I am referring to system 1. That is how you identify your strings for a given text. So this is an example of your system where you will be have, you have taken a text once upon a time comma in a far away land until end you will be having a larger text. So in this text what you are doing is I am creating system 1. So the system 1 means it will be starting at the first position and it can be going to the right until the end of your text. So I am taking until the end of the text. This dot 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 refers until the end of the text. So I am starting at one position. So once upon a time I will be having the complete text with the string 1. Then the string 2 that is I will be starting at the second position and I will be going go until the end of the text. Sistering 8, so I will go to the 8th position that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th position. This is the 8th position. O on A time in A that is that will be the remaining thing. In the same manner 11 that is 9, 10, 11 this will be the 11th position. A time in a far away. Next I am uh, writing the 22 sistering. 22 sistering is from here. A far away land. In the similar manner, you can create any number of systrings for your complete text. Okay, you can create any number of systrings for your complete text. This is how you create your systrings which will be used in your batteries. Systrings can be defined formally as abstract data types and as such present very useful and important model of your text. So whatever you have defined so far, you can treat it as an abstract data type and uh, you, can, you can create it in your programming part. The most important operation on your systrings is the lexographical comparison of systrings. So if you, the main important operation on these systrings is the comparison between two systrings. Whether one is equal to it or not, whether one is greater than one or not, another one is less than one or not. Whether system 1 is greater than system 2, system 3 is greater than system 4. So I think you can understand the systems can be greater than or less than or your comparison can be done by using the positions. Okay. This comparison is one resulting from comparison to system contents. You have to compare two system contents and find the comparison between those systems. So comparison means what is whether they are equal or not, that is the comparison. Or one is before or after the particular sistering or not. That is what you have to understand here. Okay, that is, if it is starting from the first position, that will be a greater sistering. If it is starting from the second position, that will be a bigger sistering, smaller sistering. So based upon the position also, you can find the sistering comparison. So, but the main thing is the comparison between systrings is about uh, whether they are equal or not and its position. Note that unless we are comparing a system to itself, the comparison of two systems cannot yield equal. Remember, two systems cannot be never be equal. Unless, so, if you compare a system with itself, then only it will be equal, otherwise it will never be equal. Two systems will never be equal. So whenever you are performing the comparison operation also, so if you compare a system with itself, then only it will be equal. Otherwise, no two systems will be equal. So for the same example, whatever you have seen, this is the text. For the text, you have created various systems. And if you compare, your 22 system will be less than 11. 
11th string will be less than 2 2nd so string will be less than 8 and 8th string will be less than 1 so this is how you compare one string with another so in the next session we will take these strings and how we are going to implement this string in pair trees and pair tree set trees and how the implementation will be used in pair arrays we are going to see in the next session thank you